So hello guys, today I am going to demonstrate to you a surgical uh, approach which is called posteriorial approach to the proximal tibia. And I have already uh, approached, uh, I have already uploaded a video on uh, posteriorial approach but that was in uh, supine position. Now today's patient has got a fracture of uh, the posterior condyle involving both medial as well as the lateral side. So today I am going to show you if in these cases if you have to do this approach prone. Um, and how to access the posterior condyle both medially and laterally uh, and that uh, you will be able to uh, learn by uh, watching this video. So hopefully uh, my goal today is to show you in a step by step fashion as how to do this approach in a safe manner. So this is this gentleman's uh, AP and lateral x-ray. He is a 40 year, 44 year old gentleman who unfortunately fell from his uh, bike. And you can see there is uh, something not right here, there is widening, there is uh, probably some involvement of the lateral uh, articular surface. The lateral cortex looks reasonably okay, the medial side looks pretty good. Uh, but if you go back <coughs> on the lateral, if you see something is not right here. And if you see here, um, this uh, of course there is uh, injury to the, um, the stibial spines but also something is not right in the back. And let me show you the CT scan. So if you see this uh, sagittal, if you see this is, uh, you can see everything is gone in the back. It's usually most of the injury is in the back. So this is your fibula starting from the lateral side. Just a second, I think it's just loading it. So lateral side going medially. So there is something not right on the post lateral part. And when you go medially, there is a big chunk there and can you see this? This is all posterior medial fragment. So it is all in the back and let me show you the axial. If you have to have one view in which you want to make a decision in the CT scan then it is this axial view that helps you to decide which is what injuries are gone. So if I start from up to down if you can see here this is up. The, the lateral cortex looks pretty good. So it's all in the back. So everything is gone in the back. This is the fibula. So there is involvement of posterior lateral and posterior medial. So you want an approach which can reach both. So your option will be posterior medial approach and frosh approach uh, on the lateral side using this window to reach here. But if you want to use a single incision which I think is easier um, then you have to get the patient prone. And then if you use a posterior medial approach in a prone position and you should be able to reach this beautifully and also if you get access good most times in if you have got the surgical skills you should be able to address the posterior lateral. So if you have got posterior involvement and you want to reach up to here then rather than using two incision if you use this prone approach you will be able to put a plate here and you will be able to put a plate here. So my now goal is to take you to the OT and uh, show you how this can be done by a single uh, incision. So our patient is uh, prone because most of the fracture fragments are behind. So today we are going to use post medial approach but in a prone position. So I am going to show you the approach. We have inflated the tunicate. Now because major working will be on that side, so I will come on that side. That is why when my trolley is, my C arm is on this side and my C arm screen is on this side. So this is the position we will use bolster from time to time in order to reduce the fracture and next thing will be for me to show you the skin incision. So now our patient is prone so it can be slightly disorienting this is the medial side that is the lateral side this is the head side and this is the foot side. So this is where the popliteal crease is. So our incision is L shape incision. So this is our size of the incision. This gentleman is quite big. So don't worry about the size of the incision. You want to do a good job. So it's, there's no point making a smaller incision and doing a bad job. Rather make a bigger incision and do a good job. So this is our in skin incision. And next thing will be um, our approach. So I'll try my hand not to come in the way. So make this slightly curved incision. Don't try to make an l shape incision. Um, this is one approach which scares a lot of surgeons because you don't want to go in the back because major work the artery and the nerve are in the back. So this is one reason posterior approaches are used less. So let me just complete my skin incision. This is standard skin incision so I am just going to take skin subcutaneous tissue 
and then I'm going to raise the flap on both the sides. So this is one of the vanes. So don't worry about the bleeders. You know, there will be occasions where you will find bleeders, especially when you are operating in an uncommon area. Now this is not uncommon for me, but yes, if you are operating in an area and you find a bleeder, don't worry, don't panic. Just put some pressure dressing, or put and then try to identify the bleeder and then get hold of it. No point panicking. If you panic, your brain stops working and you are more likely to make mistakes. So don't worry. So let me raise the flap on both the sides and once I have raised the flap, I will join you. So Prashant, if you can zoom out slightly. So this is again, this is the foot end and this is the head end. So now once you see this, you start seeing this gastroc uh, muscle. So we have to elevate the gastroc. So now once you have elevated the skin, you will see this fascia. Can you see this fascia? And as I am cutting the fascia, the gastroc muscle is trying to pop out. Can you see this? Now again, so the, this is once you open the fascia, here, can you see it? Because the injury is in the back, it's all hematoma. So once you have, have the, you have this, you can just use your finger and then go underneath the gas truck. So once you underneath the gas truck, you're right on the bone. So I'm right on the bone. So if I can have an L retractor, lung and back, please. Just can I have a big saw for me, please? So this is all the hematoma. Now once you do this, you need a deeper retractor. This muscle man is very, very bulky. Just gentle. Be gentle on that. You're right on. You can see the soleus, and if you go up slightly, you will see the popliteus. So you're right on the back. So if you can see here, here, I don't know whether Prashant can show. Yes, he can. So this is. We're right onto the bone. So this is the soleus muscle, and on top there will be popliteus. So we're just going to open this more. So this is the fascia, so I am just same in the line of incision, I am just going to open the fascia. So this is the fascia which we have opened. And here you can see the short saphenous vein, right there. So we will, don't go any close to it. So now, because we need some proximal incision, we have to make this incision slightly bigger. So if, Amit, if you can just take this here, call in the corner, and then, I'm just going to just release it. Just keep releasing it. Just keep releasing it. And then we will start seeing the proximal part. So if you can see here, I have done nothing so far. Skin, subcutaneous tissue, open the fascia. I've just bent the knee because it's taking the tension off of the gas rock so that I can show you better. Now if I just make it slightly dry for you. Now if you see, Amit and Nikunj, they are reflecting our gastrosoleus complex up. And now, if, um, and now if you see here, this is right, we are on the back of the tibia. I can feel the fracture. This is the fracture site. So this is popliteus, just right up here. And this is the gastrosoleus. This is, sorry, this is the soleus. So this is popliteus and soleus. Once you reflect this up, you will be right onto the bone. So next thing is, to feel the posterior medial border. So I feel that this is the posterior medial border. So you can use either a diathermy or a knife in order to reflect this. So I'm just... The key will be to just, once you have identified the posterior medial border, just stay close to the bone. So I'm right onto the bone now. So can we just suck there please? So just, I'm just being close to the bone. Right onto the bone. Can you see this hematoma coming? So there was a lot of hematoma which we have washed. Now we have reflected this popliteus and soleus. Can you see this? And now if I put my homan, and this is now on, this is the posterior, this is on the posterior lateral or side of the tibia. And if I just extend this, extend this, 
you should be able to see the shoulder Amit you, you can see the fracture you can see this a small fragment here a small fragment here now you have got full access of posterior medial and this is the central part as I showed you on the CT scan this is almost the center part so so far we have got access to the lateral sorry posterior medial as well as the central part so with this prone approach you can um, easily plate uh, anything on the posterior medial side so let's first fix this and once we are done um, we'll see how the lateral side looks so if uh, Prashant if you can zoom out slightly please so what we have done in order to reduce this when you flex it it will get relaxed and there will be shortening but if you extend it then that shortening will disappear and the fracture fragment will fall back in its position so what we have done is we have put the bolster just underneath the knee if Prashant can show and this is extension so this is hanging in the air and once we do that this is beautifully fallen back in place so if you just extend it your shortening and your fracture fragment and your apex what we talk about the wedge um, the wedge fragment the apex is just here so now we have got full access here can you see this we have got full access here now you get this dedicated plate for the posterior medial side uh, we don't have access to that so we are going to use a titanium three hole plate in order to buttress this so this is nicely reduced so our fragment one is smaller fragment here one bigger fragment here so I'm just going to put my plate in this particular position if I can get my hand off uh, if you can have something like an uh, artery just might let, let me take it in my hand so the plate position will be something like this and then putting screw is pretty straightforward so you don't need to put screws here we are just going to put the first screw just at the base of the apex or at the apex just below the apex and then this will automatically compress it so this is our first screw going just below the apex so this is so now we're putting our first screw after drilling it so if you look at our uh, lateral uh, our plate is in a good position uh, there has been some issue with the screw size so this is the longest we have but it's getting a reasonable purchase so we are happy the plate position looks pretty good so the apex of the fracture fragment posterior medially is nicely compressed so I'm just going to put few more screws distally and uh, then we will see how it looks so this is our final fixation for the central and the posterior medial side and it looks pretty good uh, and I'm going to show you how it looks uh, clinically so this is our final fixation done and looks pretty good if uh, Nitesh can just flex and extend it you can see there is no movement at the fracture site now it's nicely compressing there is no point putting these uh, screws apically because what we want is buttress and this is doing a good job so now we have fixed uh, the posterior medial side and the central uh, part the beauty of this approach is that you can go absolutely far lateral now this homan is now on the head of the fibula so what it does is that now we can retract it so we have retracted everything and if I can have uh, something like a thin osteotome if you can see this is the fracture fragment here can you see this here this Prashant can you show it so this is if you can raise your hand slightly so this is the posterior posterior lateral part so through this if it's a flexion injury and if it is involving only the posterior side you can do both the columns both posterior lateral and posterior medial using this approach so now uh, we can we are using a small we can use a small plate in order to buttress this fragment as well through the same approach so now we have put uh, another plate and it's nicely buttressing so access was slightly difficult so what we did was we identified where the screw hole was because this area was slightly smaller so we took the plate off and then we drilled it freehand and then we put the screw over the plate and then tighten it so this way we were able to negotiate this tight space so it's, it's a tight space but it does get if you have any issues you can start releasing on the top you can release it more on the top to gain more access distally so I'm just going to put one more score distally and that should be um, the end of the operation for this patient 
So now comes the important part. So this is uh, our plate. Now this is our popliteus and soleus complex. So you need to reconstruct whatever you have taken off. That is sign of a good surgeon. And I keep saying it from time to time in my different videos. So whatever you have reflected, try to reconstruct it back. And you can do it only if you have good understanding of anatomy and if a dissection is in good plane. So what I am doing is just approximating the epimysium. Can you see this? I have just left a layer here. And I just run a continuous suture. I have kept the knee slightly flexed so that it helps in my closure. My assistant is sleeping. Okay, so this is a continuous layer. Now we have stopped using drain at all. We have we don't use drain at all in my unit now. The only place we were using the drain was in knee replacement. But now what we have started doing is that we have given Tronexa one gram before the operation and six hours after and we give uh, two layers of RJ bandage and so far so good uh, we are collecting the data um, we have had no issues at all so this is the layer closed so I am not going to use any drain here I don't like drain I believe that if you have uh, done your closure well you don't really need to use the drain so this is your popliteus soleus complex uh, reposition nicely and once we did do it that's it so it's all plate is all covered so once we have uh, closed that, we don't do anything to gas talk, we just let it fall back. Now just the fascia, if you remember we cut it before, I am just going to run a continuous layer and then close it. So continuous layer over the fascia. Now our compartment is also nicely decompressed because the hematoma is gone. The fracture is uh, fixed. So just a continuous layer and once it's done, I will join you back. So you managed to close the fascia up to here. Here it is very flimsy. It's just cutting out. So I've just left it. Now I'm just going to cover it um, first uh, running a corner stitch and then it will be routine closure uh, for the skin. So this is our skin closed. So uh, this is how you do a posterior middle approach in a prone position. So viewers, this was a demonstration of a posterior middle approach in a prone position. So you could see how beautifully uh, you can see whole of uh, the posterior part of uh, the tibia, including the posterior medial surface, the central part, as well as the posterior lateral part. Um, so if you um, get this uh, hang of this approach, I'm sure you will be able to address uh, proximal tibial plateau fracture in a better way because in my experience, uh, most of us are quite confident in doing medial and lateral uh, plates but when it comes to posterior approach uh, we are slightly nervous uh, due to presence of uh, the artery and nerve and we try to refrain uh, using uh, these approaches however uh, if you uh, see this video uh, and i've already uploaded a video on um, uh, the approach how to uh, approach uh, the frosh approach in which you can access the post lateral part uh, of the uh, tibial plateau if it is in combination with uh, the anterolateral part. So if you've watched these videos, you should be able to uh, do a, a buttress plating in quite a confident manner. So I hope you like this video. Uh, don't forget to uh, give us a thumbs up. And also if you this approach, uh, please uh, leave a comment in the comment section as how you find it. And also please do subscribe and share our channel. Thank you.